everyone. I'm recording this session today, so um, let's see if we can push this quickly. I found this documentary, it's a Japanese documentary, and I think some of us might have seen this. And this gentleman here, it's not in English, so I'll have to um, talk over it. So right now, this um, gentleman on the right is a doctor in Japan, and like many, many years ago, he's the, the person who found a way to, um, to remove the, the polyps within the intestine without, without opening up your, your stomach. He was able to do it within the intestine. Does it make any sense? So before you apparently had to open up, but uh, he's the one who, who came up with a new technology. So he's uh, the doctor who, who's into intestinal health and he will show you first. Um, this is guts that belong to uh, an elderly age 90, okay? So what we're seeing here, it's very clean. There's no wrinkles. Yeah, the color's good. This is a, a good example of a clean gut. Okay. And since we don't have all the time to, to look at everything. Oh, uh, now it's another person. And you see that there's holes, right? Oof. Do I want to make it smaller? <laughs> it's very graphic. Ooh, all right. So this, you can see there's a lot of holes there and things get stuck in between. I'm so sorry. <laughs> and what happens? Infections, I'm going to fast forward this. And many holes, oh my gosh. Now it's another person. Look, all, Everything that needs to get pushed out, it's all in there. And you know what? This belongs to someone very young and apparently very good looking. Okay. And this belongs to someone who's only 34. Okay. Actually, the, one, the person before that it was even younger than 34. And honestly, this is a disaster. Okay. And you can see that um, she, this person, has many polyps and has progressed to cancer, okay? Cervical cancer. And you know what? The looks has nothing to do with it. Very young person and keep going. Um, okay, you know what? I think that's enough to see. And here, they're all in their 30s. And what's happening here is that, remember the 90 year old person's intestinal didn't look anything like this. This is basically like two centimeter and up polyps. And it's happening because of the, um, the feces that's remaining, doesn't get flushed out. This is a cancer of cells. It has progress to cancer. And this is all in the guts. And, oh God, we don't need to see anymore. All right, now. The reason why they're showing this is that um, regardless of your age, um, what you eat, how you treat your um, intestinal health, is hugely affected by the food you eat and the amount of water. And he's saying that um, this, not only you'll be um, gassy, bloated, or you'll have um, constipation issue, it's much more than um, just that. The environment in your guts is a lot more important. And he's going to talk about when, okay, she's going to ask the question. So can you, can you describe and explain what could uh, happen if you have a not so healthy environment in your intestine? And he says, if you have any uh, residual um, stuff that's stuck in your um, intestines, actually what happens is that it can create gas, toxic gas, and actually all the stuff can be absorbed back into your bloodstream. 
So all the gas and toxins and uh, cancerous uh, substances can be created, right? If you think about it, and within days and weeks. And then it can travel back into your bloodstreams and it will move around in your body. So what happens? Maybe Denise can understand the Japanese here. Right? Then this can be linked to prote uh, prostate cancer or even breast cancer. So in America, in the US, um, patients with breast cancer always gets checked for their um, colon health. And of course, if you have colon cancer, it can be very easy to be um, transferred to breast cancer or prostate. It's everything is so closely linked. So they do the test throughout. They don't just do one organ, one area. So um, obviously we should all know this. People with high diet and meat um, or dairy food, um, they're exposed to higher risk for all this. And if your diet lacks um, fiber, and vegetables and fruits or like um seaweed if you don't have um diet that consists of all the stuff that's listed just now then you're at huge risk we we um you know we all know this and it's amazing because um this your call your uh, intestinal flora and its environment can be linked to um cardiovascular disease and even um, high blood pressure and lung cancer. And the list goes on. And if you drink a lot of alcohol, you know, I think it's the case in Japan and Korea a lot. And when uh, you drink a lot of alcohol, it gets absorbed in your um, intestinal and it goes to your liver. And of course, the liver will overwork and use a lot of energy, which will make your um, liver condition really bad. And if you consume a lot of dairy products, like milk and stuff, um, you can have allergic reaction, which we all know called um, atopic condition. And, and it can lead to a rheumatism on your, on your joints. And we know all the protein that's animal-based um, that can contribute negative towards your um, gut flora, okay? And polyps and cancers, yes, we know, but not only that. Um, and it, I couldn't find, I couldn't find another one that's contiguous because it shows you, it shows you what um, actual probiotics actually does to help it. But I found another uh, short clip and it might help you so that we know if you don't have clean guts, not only can be constipated and gassy, but it can lead to uh, much more. And you know what, another thing that I found, it can travel back into your bloodstream and really contribute to your skin condition too. So if you're breaking out, um, bloated at the same time, then definitely wanna you uh, look into your intestinal flora and health. And this one is quite short, but it will show you uh, what I just said. Ingesting probiotics may increase the levels of beneficial bacteria in the gastrointestinal tract. The beneficial bacteria ferment undigested carbohydrates, producing short-chain fatty acids. These acids lower the pH of the intestine, making it inhospitable to bacteria that could be pathogenic. Probiotics also help keep the intestinal mucosa healthy. The mucosa lines the inside of the intestine and serves as the essential barrier between the external environment and the immune system. In addition, probiotics help repair damage to the mucosa by stimulating epithelial cell regeneration. They can also reduce inflammation in the gut by counteracting the effects of pro-inflammatory cytokines and by increasing production of anti-inflammatory cytokines. Further benefits of probiotics include helping prevent harmful bacteria from colonizing the gastrointestinal tract. And perhaps most importantly, recent clinical evidence suggests that consumption of probiotics may reduce the potential for certain childhood illnesses.
All right. So now we go back to the providers that's offered by Atomy. Sorry about this, all the graphic stuff, but in a way, um, I think it's good to be in a no. So let's see here. All right. So probiotics 10 plus, can you see the slides? Yeah. Um, the people in this room, we all kind of know what probiotics is, but just 10 years ago, it was something new. And I remember my uh, nurse um, relative used to call it a friendly bacteria. So there's a lot of wordings here, but basically um, in, in Latin means for life, and um, in our body, there's, in our guts, there's two types of, um, if you say, harmful bacteria and um, beneficial bacteria. And you have to have a certain balance in it, but because of the stress and the food that we eat, it's very hard to keep the balance. And um, the known fact, which is kind of sad, is that the, the newborns these days, because that's when you're supposed to have the most um, beneficial bacteria in your body when the babies are born um, but it's known that um, kids these days when when they check um, it's known to because all the anti um, antibiotics and all the the fast food that we eat and all that stuff um, it's found to have very low in balance the beneficial bacteria so that's why it's been kind of popular um, past few few years uh, pro, uh, probiotics and prebiotics is another thing. So I'm going to talk about it a little bit later. So intestinal flora, our guts, we call it the guts. And I was very shocked to know that the intestinal flora itself can weigh up to two kilograms. And actually our gut is said to be our second brain. So um, 10, no, that's 100,000 billion bacteria they reside in our body, good and bad. And um, what happens is that if you lose the balance, because 80% of our immune system comes from our gut. And another thing that I added today is that, have you heard of serotonin? Have you heard of it? Serotonin is, a, some people call it happy hormone, happy chemical. So it's a chemical that's produced in a body and uh, it's 95% of serotonin is actually produced in our gut. And that chemical is in charge of our moods and our um, um, emotional well-being. So it is true that um, the bacteria in our body, some of them uh, will make you depressed, some of them will make you happy, some of them, and serotonin is the one that will make you actually happy. Some of them will um, make you gain weight, some of them will make you lose weight, unnecessarily so all kinds of things are going on in there and to have that balance in our body um, it's been underestimated for the past few years it's been our focus and a lot of studies are being done and of course um, people are taking many things for it I don't know if I have the slide for it but so what do people do when my children were young and especially my first one and I didn't have good good information on probiotics so what is the first thing that I go and reach out was yogurt. Do you agree? For your children, you go and buy better yogurt, thinking that's going to be good for my children. And apparently it's one of the biggest myths. Because in order to have an adequate amount of probiotics for your body, apparently you need to consume like 50 containers of Greek yogurt every day. That's a lot of sugar, <laughs> that's a lot of fat, and it's a lot of money. So just a little container of um, you know, yogurt with jam in it. You know, you can honestly say that 99% of the products out there contains close to none uh, living probiotics in it and um, a lot of sugar, okay? So yes, um, it's, it's there. So is all probiotic the same? Mm, no, of course. And I do not like to put down any other products out there. But I am an, a parent, and my older child um, has experienced eczema, a topic condition when she was really young. And this is before I met Atomy. And there was a huge um, 
there was a documentary that many of mothers in my Korean community watched and enlisted and enlisted three major probiotics that was strongly recommended not only for the eczema and atopic condition for children, but for um, severe bad breath. You're laughing, you could be laughing, but you know, it could affect your lifestyle. Usually there are people who are laid off or who couldn't, um, they have fear to go into public because of all of that. Or they found out the immune system um, and the probiotics link has contribution towards autism too. So it was a huge documentary that people, um, we circulated all that. I don't know in how you, you watched it. So what did I do? I ran to Ambrosia or uh, Whole Foods, whatever is close to you. I went to Ambrosia and it was literally, um, especially the section with the children's probiotics, it was emptied out. I remember that. And I had to buy two things, a yogurt and a, a powder form. But it was very hard to take. And because not one product has the three that was listed in the documentary. So I had to buy two and I don't even remember, you know what, cost. I'd rather not buy, um, I don't know, I'd rather not eat out as much or don't buy so much clothes. I was ready to pay whatever to help my child. And I'm sure a lot of people will agree. Um, but it was quite pricey. It was at least, um, I don't know, $80, $90 per month if I didn't forget to take it. But the fact, the truth is, I keep forgetting it was a hassle. The little spoons and the yogurt was um, quite pricey. So I just didn't really keep up to it. But let's look at this one because when first time I um, ran into this product, what did I do? Quickly look at the back and saw if those three were there. So I remember the first one was um, Lactobacillus acetophilus. Um, another one, Streptococcus. I remember it so clearly because I was looking for it. So, and Bifidobacterium. So there, it's called 10 plus because let me see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Wow, there's like close to 16 now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Sixteen, but some of them share similar names. So we know that it's about twelve different um, probiotics there. And it says three billion lactobacilli taken per one sachet, but be aware they put twenty billion a manufacturing and Korean people they um, really consider how many are alive at the end of the expiry date. So three billion is at the end of the expiry date, which is one year. So they say, you know, after even six months, still okay to take, but three billion is after one year, but 20 billion, that's a lot. But not only that, um, people say some probiotic will work for you, some won't. So the key is having more than a few. Um, strains of probiotics in one product. So not only already this is $33 plus tax for 60 and I know having to take two or three different to get an uh, adequate amount of probiotics, I was already saving at least, at least, at least, it was a one month dose for $80. So being a mother, I can already say 33 for two months for one child, right? Let's say it's $40. And it was 80 for one month. So I'm saving what? Four times a quarter. And like four times or five times more different types of probiotics right there. So we already kind of went through it. And if you go online, you can see each one of them, what they do. So I'm not going to waste time looking at each one of them because you can definitely go back to the website and take a look at it. And I was kind of... Um, fascinated to see has kimchi lactobacillus extract <laughs> it's like kimchi is medicine for everything for koreans okay and um hyaluronic acid oh there's a lasting peptide that's good um uh, protein and probiotics and prebiotics i don't know if you noticed and um if you're paying attention to the second video clip it says probiotics need its own food and the food is called prebiotics there are many, many types. And one thing I remember, it's glucose. So some people take probiotics and they have to take prebiotics separately too, right? Which is extra.
but you can see here um, these apples and bananas, I believe they're and onions and the glucose. So, so our probiotics, Atomi probiotics, contains both probiotics and prebiotics, which is food for them to go on, right? So you can check that out. And um, how much do you have to take? They say one a day for adult. And my children are now um, 12 and seven, and they take one each. Well, until last year, I gave them a half each. Um, it was fine. And um, I can see, because you know what? Being at daycare the whole time and being at school, we've been sort of fortunate because, you know, they get sick all the time. But it's been um, a lot better with the frequency and duration of sickness with children. So I can see that it's doing a lot of uh, beneficial movements in them. So it's a must have. You know, it's sold out at times. I need to have, I need this product for my children. Um, and of course, I have many family members with hyperactive. I don't know what it is in English, but it's like you eat something and you have to run. Are you familiar? <laughs> what do you call that? It's like very sensitive guts. And um, it's been helping a lot, definitely. Diarrhea or constipation, anything, because that's basically your body's crying out that it was irritated and you got to get to the bottom of it, not just to suppress the, the symptoms, okay? Um, this is, I know it's in Korean, but you can see, okay, that's a box that's packaged in Korea. So that's twice as much. And like I said, I don't like to compare and put down a lot, but it's good to know that if you look at it, the second, the highlighted part, that means how many different strains. Because the, the, the last three, the later three, those are quite well-known products in Korea. And they're about six, seven, eight. So they're considered pretty good. But if you go to a store, look, they usually have only one, two, three at the most different strains. Okay. And they can have so many, but how much is left? The second highlighted is how many are alive after one year. And you can see, and of course, if you do the math, um, they're as good as a half the price. Um, but if you're considering, if you're considering how many strains and um, how many, it's very hard to compare. But let me show you what's kind of popular in Canada. So I quickly went to Well.ca and I found one problem in those products marketed in, uh, in, in Canada. Surprisingly, a few of them were found to contain synthetic fillers. Yes, exactly. And you know what? Health Canada works hard. They, they find them. So Align is a big, pro it's a big product. I've, I know that brand. I've taken some before too. But 42 capsules, um, I guess one a day, um, six-week supply, okay? And it's $47. And there's 1 billion CFU, okay? It's not even in the game. Well, does see it has cultural. I see them as shoppers all the time. Yes, this one also had a filler. So, uh, it's not very nice, is it? And Ultimate Flora, I used to take that one. The one for kids. So 14 captures for $20. But it does have 50 billion organisms. So you know what? At least you know, I'm not pushing this in front of you so I can sell. I'm a mother and you don't have to be a mother, but for your health, at least you know how to compare product. Okay, so this is a learning process. And buy okay, I used to swear buy. And it's cheaper at Amazon, but if you look at the review, it's like, it's yogurt, it needs to be ref refrigerated. It has to be refrigerated. Six bottles, you take half in the morning and you take the other half um, in, the, in the evening. So six bottles is roughly 60 a week, um, it's almost $30. The thing is the review was like, oh, they came warm. Like I will go to the stores over 30, $33. I cannot remember sharply at this point, but it was way over $30. They do have a patented uh, strain, but I think just one or two um, strains in buy a K. So you know what? You're shopping, you need to shop, shop. Here, I found one that's kind of close because they have many strains. Ah, uh, gosh, I remember... I'm, I was checking this as a trillion um, SFU. There's a lot in there. And I remember, oh my God, I can't. 
recall exact how many, but it obviously had more than a few, okay? And it has 60 sachets in the pack, but really, is this a mistake? Oh gosh, $990? Jeez. Progert, right? So do the shopping yourself, okay? It's not hard to see that this carries some type of value. So I'm going back to the website because I found something quite interesting. Um, can you see this part? Somebody asked me and I have a answer. I went to the Korean website and by now some of us can read Korean, I, <laughs> I hope. Here, question, valid question. This is powder. Some people will say, yeah, but it's better if it's in the capsule. Has anyone ever asked this question? I did, because I heard it's better to be capsulated because you know what? Our body, as soon as it goes in there, it becomes acidic, right? Our stomach works with acid to break down food, but then how does probiotics survive? Uh, lactobacilli, they're known to be quite, you know, they, they have their longevity. They are known to travel all the way down to the end station but then again if you oh sorry at atomy providers 10 plus has it says it's called pro bio cap and i checked and this is a technology from canadian company called the roselle and this is some type of patent to capsulate probiotics so the fetal bacterium longum Bactolactobacillus helveticus is added. So what did I do? I check and they're there, okay? So I asked um, the head office, hey, why don't we include that um, in our website? Because this is a very important question and it's answered. So um, this is how much I have found. And if you go to our website, do you see at the Canadian website with me? Oh, this non-member price, $46. But as soon as you have your membership, you know it becomes 33. 60 sachets, 2.5 gram. And how do I take it? I usually just open it and up it. Mmm. Tastes good. Some people put it in water, but I like it just straight like that. You can have a sip of water after, and kids would love this. My kids thought it was candy for a long time. <laughs> and when to take it? Okay, that's another good question. Some people say before, on empty stomach. Some people say after food. I take it whenever, to be honest. My kids, I, I have to take it in the morning. As soon as they get up, I have to brush your teeth thoroughly, 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 and glass of water and probiotics. So this is a debatable question for, for anyone. Um, I think I covered pretty much anything here and here. You don't need to take so much. A lot of it will go right through. Um, you don't need so much. So I think once a packet, um, or even two, it's fine. You can take a few, but that's my butt. Um, you don't need to take too much for children. So youth, basically my daughter 12 should be okay with half the pack, but you know what, just give them whole thing. And kids below 10 should be okay with even quarter. So if you think about it, a box, 60 sachets, and if your child is like four, let's say, and it's quarter a packet, that's like what? Two months times four, eight months supply for $33. I don't know. It's hard to beat. That's how I look at it. So that's it from, from me.